Welcome to Enlightened Pathways. My name is Robert Kabeca, and I am your host for today's spiritual journey. They say that space is the final frontier, and even though we can now clearly peer into the farthest reaches of the known universe more than ever before, I believe the final frontier is, and always will be, our own personal inside journey. When we look up with awe on a star-filled night, we ask who or what created all of this? Was it all made for me, or was I made for it? What drives us to explore and discover the outside world? And what drives us even more to explore and discover our inside world? We're all born into a religion or belief system of some kind which influences how we perceive everything. And yet, we all seem innately curious to discover more about ourselves and the meaning in our lives. Did you know there are over 2,000 known religions in the world? Which one is the right one? Is there a wrong one? Are we allowed to change our beliefs and create new ones that support a flourishing life that forges our destiny? What happens when we choose to evolve our spirituality and live out our lives based on what we choose to believe to be true? Do our beliefs divide and separate us, or do they bring us together in greater harmony? Join us now as we deeply explore all that nourishes and heals and inspires us. Welcome to Enlightened Pathways. Hello and welcome. My name is Robert Kabeca and welcome to Enlightened Pathways. I am your host for today's spiritual journey. Please allow me to introduce our special guest today, Bobby Walsh. And Bobby and I met in January of 2019 and I had been homeless for a few months uh, while I was driving around the country. Uh, driving around the country when you have financial resources uh, is one thing and driving around the country when you don't is completely different. Uh, so Bobby had a, uh, a ad on Craigslist for a room for rent and we quickly discovered that we had something really powerful in common and that was Neville Goddard, a uh, quite uh, significant mystic uh, in the uh, 50s, 60s and 70s. And I've been studying a student of Neville Goddard for many years and so is Bobby and we just clicked off really, really well, and we have been really great friends ever since. And I've been grateful for his friendship for all these years and all he's uh, meant for me in my own life. Um, and I would like to say hello to Bobby Walsh. Well, thanks. Yeah. It's wonderful to be here. Yes. It's wonderful to have you here. And you and I have had many, many conversations. We have. <laughs> for hours and hours and hours about all kinds of things. Yes. And yes. today we get, maybe I get the privilege of focusing <laughs> in on your spiritual journey because I know something about that and I'm really excited to be able to share some of that journey with our audience because it's been powerful for me in my own life in what it's meant for me in my own spiritual journey and the impact that your journey has had in my life. Yeah. So I'm very appreciative of you making time for us today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're so, welcome. Yeah. yeah. Again, yeah. I'd like to be here for my friend and yeah. for the initiation of a wonderful um, program. Thank you. Well, let's start. Let me ask the first question. <laughs> <laughs> and the first question is, so what belief system were you born into that you grew up with in early childhood? And how did that belief system, as you remember, impact your life uh, in early childhood? I grew up in the Catholic Christian tradition, um, and I, um, my family was very involved in going to church, and, and um, I participated in um, weekly church services um, at a young age, about maybe nine or ten, I actually became an altar boy, which was a nice experience. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, how it affected me, for me, I saw it as a mystery. 
it, as a young person, it was a mystery. I um, certain things about the church, the church setting, the lights, the candles, the um, depictions of events, biblical events. Um, yeah, and, and the stories from the Bible and and the messages and. I didn't know it then, as I see it now, but it was a wonderful expression of the psychology of the human experience and consciousness of my own self. Um, so yeah, that's those formative years. Um, it was a decent experience. Oh, fantastic, and thank you for sharing that. I remember I, I grew up in the Catholic tradition as well and went to Catholic school mm. uh, for a few years. Um, until things happened and I had to leave. Um, but I remember wanting to be an altar boy, and mm. for whatever reason, I don't think I, I didn't, I could qualify, I can't remember why, but I just remember I loved the one thing that I loved more than anything was the incense. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the smoky incense, I don't know, that seemed to get me all the time. Understandably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, why don't you, uh, so was there anything that happened? in, uh, you know, in your uh, later childhood, um, that's where you started to question, maybe, maybe you questioned, your belief system that you were then accustomed to, and what caused you to question it, and where did that start to take you? Yeah, um, well, um, I would say I um, had questions. Uh, my Older brothers and cousins had their questions, and I um, received what they were thinking. And so I certainly had, um, if not not necessarily doubts, but certainly um, certain things I was trying to understand about um, the Bible formation, the church's expression of it, the Catholic Church's expression, which dealt with the Old Testament and the New Testament, um, Gospels gospel messages as well as other um, uh, New Testament messages. So I was just trying to, I knew there was a lot to learn about it and um, I didn't really identify too much with any particular faith or belief at that time. It was just an experience. Um, and then from that experience I um, explored the possibility of um, going into the monastery, and when I explored it, it didn't seem right for me. Um, so in, gra in undergraduate school, I, I had the great opportunity to study um, certain um, things, such as theology of religions, and, um, and it was a wonderful vantage point of other perspectives. So um, the different aspects of Christianity, the different aspects of religions such as Buddhism, um, Hinduism, um, the Muslim traditions, um, other more esoteric or alternative uh, or religions. Um, so in college was when I really started to question and explore for myself um, that. And I think for me, the ultimate synopsis of that experience was um, looking on an intellectual level more of the notion of self-love in my connection with God. Mm. What did it mean to be one with God? Um, what did it mean to really have that love connection? And if I had that, maybe I could humanistically um, be there for others. And mm -hmm. so um, from that intellectual understanding that I learned in college, I, yeah, I had a few years off from studies and um, and then I um, went to graduate school, um, um, studied in social work. I thought the ministry of working um, with others was a nice ministry for me. Um, Great. And that was my um, orientation for a vocation. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And there's, there's a lot in there that I, I'd like to unravel, or not unravel, but look into a little bit more. Like, uh, when you said you went to a, a, a class in college, undergraduate, you know, where you started studying theology a little mm -hmm. 
Um, it just reminded me of about, I guess, 15 years ago, 16 years ago, I also took a similar class. And up until then, I, I thought maybe there were a few dozen religions. I knew there were a lot of religions. I just didn't know how many. Mm-hmm. And I learned that there were over 2,200 religions, known mm-hmm. religions, right? Yeah. And, you know, even more than that, that are practiced that are not recorded or, or however, you know. And I just thought that that was really remarkable. And that just blew my mind mm-hmm. because I was like, wow, you know, it's like we, in the media, we hear only like, you know, like the five main religions, yes, as it were, as I stated. <laughs> you know, and, and they're all fighting against each other and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's like, where do you find, you know, like that oneness, that love that you were talking about, yeah. you know, in all of that? And the other question that uh, came up to me as well, when you were looking for that connection, mm-hmm. So did that connection seem to you to be something from the outside that you were trying to bring in, or was it something you were trying to awaken from the inside out? Um, Well, good question. I feel it came from the inside with exploring and experiencing the outside. Um, I, in 1994, a few years after graduating from college, I moved to Vermont, and I... For the first year, I was getting acclimated, getting a job, and then by 1995, I met a wonderful spiritual friend who owned a bookstore, spiritual bookstore, and I really started to explore. That was my, um, like, 1995 to 2003, my, I played this fun, in a um, lighthearted way, Bobby Digital years. I was really exploring, really seeing what activated me, what what gave me a sense of knowingness, a sense of beingness. And so it was kind of an exploratory time. Um, And it was an inner thing, though. And also, um, it led to a transition of really choosing to know myself and what that meant to me. You know thyself is one of the Mm. big um, philosophical and spiritual tenets. And so, um, you know, I was choosing to live in a humanistic way, live by the golden rules, um, and, you know, kind of moved me a bit away from religion or a particular faith, but everything, I took everything in a very open way, and and I, um, you know, was kind of in a new mode uh, at that point of exploring and experiencing and had wonderful experiences mm-hmm. with some groups of people, mm-hmm. do laughter ther- counseling, laughter sessions, sound sessions. We that's where I was introduced to Neville for the first time. And and how do you be joyful and happy and peaceful? And that was from the inside. It wasn't mm-hmm. anything out there that was gonna um, bring that out in me. I had to, you know, um, right plant it and plant the seed and have the attitude and and how did that how did that journey that exploration um support you in maybe other challenges that you were having in your life at that time yeah um well i could really see um i had some inhibitances some things that restricted me um some like what like like a tendency to be introverted, tendency to be self-conscious, not to share of myself, um, kind of um, a restrictiveness. Um, so I looked a lot at um, my own self and, and, the, and the systems I grew up in and the constructs that I held about myself. Um, and I, as time went on, um, looking at those things, I established a new attitude, a new way of seeing myself. And gradually, I mean, they, some of them exist to this day. <laughs> so, um, but um, I, I, it was like an opening for me. And it helped me cope with some of those challenging, for better word, ego spaces. Um, and things that kind of were expansive, they were kind of restrictive, and 
-hmm. Also, they didn't um, fertilize or bring about in me um, those states that I really was wanting to experience, which is on the spiritual level especially, um, which was, um, again, going back to loving myself and what that meant to me. And so it was like a good 10-year period where I did a lot of self-work, a lot of examining, witnessing myself. That's fantastic. And where did that lead you uh, mm -hmm. to where your spiritual beliefs are now? Yeah. And what's this journey you're on now mm -hmm. like? And yeah, great question. I, um, 2000, 2010 to 2022, the present, I have kind of shifted in a new mode for different reasons and different variables, factors, um, where I have chosen and created in different forms through my own um, kind of growth in terms of my own consciousness, in terms of my own way of being imaginative and creative and choosing what I really want and then coming from that choice and being that and not letting my perceptions of the world or myself and certainly I get caught up in the world of perceptions and opinions <laughs> and such but um, yeah I, it was I was expanding and okay. um, and certainly I was choosing how I chose to be and um, that had to do with um, like my God self my my um, the source of who I am, the um, kind of being, truly being who I am and allowing that to mm -hmm. resonate through me and um, yeah. And how does that belief system, this, this journey you're on now, how does it support you, not just in what's going on in your life right now, but when you watch the news and we see everything that's going on on the planet right now, yeah. it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. And do you find it difficult or challenging to um, make sense out of things? Or do you even bother trying to make sense out of it, you know, uh, and maybe just kind of focus on, you know, that, that inner connection to support you? I'm not trying to put words in your mouth yeah. in the answer, but, you know, what does that... Yeah. What does that state it's a great question. look like? And yeah. I must say, I do get caught up in the world a bit. Um, and a lot of it is where you place your atten where I place my attention. Mm -hmm. um, I have certain strong constructs in me that I think they're part of my constitution of this lifetime. Um, and part of that is some grains of social justice, some grains of... Um, how systems are working and so it's difficult for my seeing when those things don't seem to be going well and that whether it be very you know various factors um economics the environment other dynamics mm -hmm. of social aspects um democracy uh, looking at the challenges of mm -hmm. our uh, political systems and in economic business systems, both local, global. Uh, and how do you bring that into conversations that you have with other people? You know, this concept that you have of your spirituality, your connection in relation to that. You know, I've kind of found um, my partner, best friend. Um, she reminds me, and it's a good reminder that you can really be pulled in to it very easily. So sometimes it's not really something I talk about. <laughs> um, I think if I'm talking about it, I get pulled into it. I have my way of seeing things mm -hmm. and my concerns, but I don't really talk to people about it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many wonderful things to advocate for and to, um, to be mindful of. For me, looking at it, being a witness of it, and seeing how I might react seeing how I might be more mindful about it, more um, compassionate and more less judgmental uh, and more less assessing others. Um, so because I want to be who I am and I want to be in a joyful, peaceful, 
loving way, happy, happiness, mm -hmm. but um, it's a fine balance. And I want to look and see what's going on. On the other end, um, it's challenging to witness, and even talking about it can be can pull you in and sure. lead to my own assessments and and differences of others. The differences part is big. And you talked about these strong constructs that you have, and I think you just exemplified a few of them quite mm -hmm. strongly. Um, is there a specific aspect of any one of those constructs that um, you might like to uh, relate to in the, in the last few minutes that we have? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the inside sure. um, way. It is like a way, it's really has been an initiation in the past 30 years of my life, if not longer, to really focus my attention on um, on that which is enriching for me. And not to deny or avoid looking at the more challenging things, but to, um, to be who I am and to, in a, in a different way, claim who I am. One of my claims is, I am that I am. I make my choices. I manifest my own consciousness. I create my own reality. There are certain things that are physiological and, for better word, kind of the physical form piece, like anxiety or, or anger or sadness um, that certainly exist and they're part of my experience, but I choose to rise above it and not to let it um, consume me and, and to override my ultimate program, my ultimate, it's like kind of like creation is done, it's perfect, and I come from that perfection, and I live that way as best I can. And when I'm not living that way, <laughs> I, I, I witness it, which is a lot. <laughs> but no, really, it's something that I, it's just so constituted in me, it is who I am. Mm -hmm. So whatever else happens, it does happen, but. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and thank you for for going to that level with us. I appreciate you opening up and sharing that, mm. that compartment. Yeah. You know, it's really powerful for me to hear that. Yeah. Um, is there uh, something that's uh, in your own personal insights or your own insights and your beliefs that you would like to share with us? Something that's really significant yeah. to you? Yeah, maybe if one or two or three things. Um, yeah. One being, um, the power of imagination and declaring what you want to be, who you want, what you really desire, and to hold that space and not to let objective reality of what you're seeing or thinking about change that for you. And it's kind of like imaginative love or imaginative joy. You, you kind of can create that just by choosing it. That's one thing. Another thing is you know, being open and being receptive to guidance, to wherever that might come from, from within, from um, whatever source that may be classified as, uh, to be receptive and, and not an expansive openness to, um, to what you might receive. And guidance, I think, is a big thing. I, th I do think we receive guidance and, and, and so, and I think we live in multiple dimensions and multiple um, in this world and as well as other dimensions and, and to, you know, be creative and, and to um, really know, who, choose to know who you are. And yeah. ultimately, I think we all want to be joyful, peaceful, and happy. I agree with that, you know, <laughs> and, and I also uh, resonate with the idea of the multiple dimensions and what have you. And mm. I, I just love exploring quantum jumping. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And that, that's a whole nother topic for the physical a whole nother few hours. As well as <laughs> more. Yeah. Um, it's more, really remarkable. You know, a, and I've studied that extensively yeah. in terms of um, yeah. different dimensional spaces where the body mind become, it's a different experience than it is in, in this yeah. earthly dimension. Never mind the universe has its potential parallel universes and potential 
Bobby Digital could be in another life form right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, just in a playful way sure. to, um, you know, to be open to. Um, and I think two other, two or three other things. I think meditation goes a far away. Prayer for me, prayer means coming from the end, holding what you really choose to be, and and be that. Yeah. And remember that. Yeah. Stillness, quietness, I think, can be such a big thing for that. I'd like to share. I recommend for others. Um, and I know in these times it's so busy that we have so many things we can connect with and yeah. Yeah. receive information and otherwise. Well, thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for your time. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have to speak with Bobby today. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, Bobby and I can just talk for hours and hours and hours and uh, explore many different facets. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you for being here with us today and yeah. for sharing your insights, sharing part of your journey with us. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And just a few closing remarks and a shout out to today's executive producer and sponsor, Bridge to Heaven Healing and Leap and Lizards, which is the premier source for healing crystals with four locations, including 120 Center Street in Auburn, Maine. You can visit www.leapandlizards.biz for more information. Hey, also got a shout out to Blazes Burgers in Westbrook, Outrageous Burgers and Authentic Routine for real. Yeah, you got to go to Blazes Burgers on Main Street in Westbrook, or you can visit them at blazesburgers.org. And also, another shout out to customstickers.com. Can't forget they made these really cute uh, Zen Duck stickers for us. Uh, I was really excited to get them, and their service and quality is just magnificent. So I just got a shout out to them too. If you'd also like to get more information about this show, reach out to us or sponsor us, please visit www.deepbeam.org. And couldn't have done the show without the crew, so thank you to Patrick, Dale, and Travis, and Warren, and all the rest of the folks here at uh, Portland Media Center. Appreciate you. Thank you. Till next time, play, have fun, be happy.